The Viper Spectre KS3000 is a foldable LED bar fixture designed for 3x3 coverage. It's part of the new KS series. They're the first LED bar fixtures from Vipar Spectra, and they're among the best on the market. The KS series uses Samsung LM301H and OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes. With algorithmically distributed diodes and larger frames, the KS series is designed to achieve uniform coverage at optimal photon densities. Hello, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide. I run the Vipar Spectra KS3000 through four PAR and EPAR tests at different heights in a 3x3 space. It produced remarkable PAR and EPAR maps with excellent uniformity and superior performance statistics. Although larger lights should have an advantage, the KS3000 recorded the highest photon efficiency that I've measured among production model fixtures. Like the KS5000 that I tested a few weeks ago, I think this KS3000 is the best fixture in its class. I give away the fixtures that I test during my live premieres on YouTube. One lucky grower will win this Vipar Spectra KS3000. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and tune into the live premieres for your chance to win. The Vipar Spectra KS3000 arrived in this box. Let me open it up and see what we got. A manual and some stickers. This little box has some hanging cables, ratchet pulleys, and a plug adapter. Under this cover, we have the power cables. Only one of them is not attached. And then we have a driver from Lifehood? Now I just have to get the fixture out of the box. I'll remove the padding on each side and open it up. Let's take a look at what we got. The driver is made by Lifehood? Viper Spectra and the published statistics describe it as a high quality, high efficiency driver, but it's my first experience with this brand. On this end, they have a dimmer knob. Then, we have the power cord, plug adapter, and the hanging kit. The KS3000 has four LED bars with a larger gap in the middle, and the diodes along each bar are algorithmically distributed with a concentration toward the ends. In addition, the frame is larger than competitive fixtures. You can see it's nearly as large as the 3x3 area that it's designed to cover. The KS3000 measures 80 centimeters or 31 and a half inches on each side. A large frame and algorithmically distributed diodes help the KS5000 produce excellent uniformity in my tests. I expect similar results from the KS3000. I just got to connect the cable here and turn on the new Vipar Spectra KS3000. Let's check out the diodes. You can see the concentration of diodes toward the ends of the bars. Each bar has 210 diodes. In total, there are 840 diodes, or 2.8 diodes per watt. Vibar Spectra went with top-end components for the KS series. There are 816 Samsung LM301H diodes. 528 of them have a color temperature of 3000K, and 288 have a color temperature of 5000K. There are also 24 OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes. This is a common combination which creates a perfect spectrum for vegetative and flowering plants. While we wait for the diodes to warm up and stabilize, let's check out the published stats. This is the product page for the KS3000 on ViparSpectra.com. You can see the price here is about $370. It's the same price on Amazon. And at both places, you can use our discount codes. For the KS series, use code DrMJCocoKS. Let me scroll through the images. I've been impressed with the data ViparSpectra has been publishing. For the KS3000, they published sphere test results. They measured a total PPF of 782 micromoles at a power draw of 306 watts, which is a total PPE of 2.6 micromoles per watt. Before I run my tests, let's run these data through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It focuses on the important metrics and allows you to make better comparisons. In the calculator on the right, I load all the fixtures that I test. Let me pull up the data from the Vipar Spectra KS5000. As you can see, it performed brilliantly. 2.43 micromoles per watt ties the best efficiency that I've measured among production model fixtures. With discount code DrMJCocoKS on Amazon or ViparSpectra.com, the cost is $582. That gives the KS5000 a cost efficiency of only 49 cents per micromole. In the calculator on the left, I'll enter the sphere test data from the KS3000 that we got from Vipar Spectra. 
They measured a power draw of 306 watts. With discount code Dr. MJ Coco KS, the cost will be about $359. The PPF data is from a sphere test, so I'll select total PPF. They measured 782 micromoles of total flux. The calculator estimates that 677 of those micromoles will reach the canopy. If that estimate is accurate, the KS3000 would get a usable photon efficiency of 2.21 micromoles per watt. But with well-distributed light and a low hanging height, the KS3000 could outperform the calculator's estimates. Regardless, it should be more than enough light for a 3x3 space. It's time to run some tests. The hanging height for the KS3000 in the 3x3 space is even lower than I expected. I got the maximum PPFD up to 1,000 micromoles per square meter at a hanging height of only 21.5 centimeters, 8.5 inches above the sensor. There is no hot spot in the middle. Indeed, the highest PPFDs are near the top and bottom of the test area. Moving light away from the middle allows the lower hanging height and the lower hanging height ensures that nearly all of the photons will reach the canopy. I ran this complete PAR test with the Apogee SQ500 PAR sensor, and then I ran an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 EPAR sensor. EPAR includes all of the PAR light plus far red light. The latest research shows that far red light is photosynthetically active, so the EPAR test is a better measure of the growth potential of a fixture. The KS3000 does not have any diodes dedicated to far red light, but the Samsung LM301H diodes put out some of their energy in the far red wavelengths. These maps are going to be impressive. Let's check out the PAR map first. This is an incredible PAR map. There are PPFD values above 900 from top to bottom, and the two sides say close to 700 micromoles per square meter. The lowest PPFD is on the left edge at 661 micromoles per square meter. This is impressive. I'll flip to the EPAR map. All the values go up, because in this test we're counting all of the PAR light plus the far red photons from 700 to 750 nanometers. In the EPAR range, the entire map is in the maximum production zone. The lowest EPPFD is 713 micromoles per square meter. This is a lot of light to put in a 3x3 space. Let's run the numbers. The hanging height for both tests was only 21.5 centimeters, 8.5 inches. The maximum PPFD was right at 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and the maximum EPPFD was slightly higher at 1,042 micromoles per square meter. In the PAR test, the average PPFD was very high at 858.7 micromoles per square meter. That converts to a usable PPF of 695.5 micromoles. In the EPAR test, the average EPPFD is over 900 micromoles per square meter. That's a usable EPPF of 731.1 micromoles. That means the Vipar Spectra KS3000 delivered 35.6 micromoles of far red light, which is 4.9% of the total flux. The power draw during both tests was 298 watts, so the usable PAR photon efficiency is 2.33 micromoles per watt, and the usable EPAR photon efficiency is 2.45 micromoles per watt. It did indeed do better than the calculator estimated. The Vipar Spectra KS3000 just set a new record for usable photon efficiency among production model fixtures. The performance in these tests is impressive, but the hanging height is pretty low. I decided to run a second set of tests with the KS3000 several inches higher. I raised it to 30.5 centimeters, or 12 inches above the sensors. This is the height that Vipar Spectra recommends for flowering. Again, I ran a PAR test with the Apogee SQ500 sensor, and then an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 sensor. At a higher height, the maximum PPFD will be lower, but the light will be better distributed. However, with the KS3000, the light was already really well distributed, even at the lower height. So let's see what these raised maps look like. First, we have the PAR map with the 400 to 700 nanometer light. At this height, nearly the entire canopy is in the maximum production zone. There's just one corner below 700 micromoles per square meter. If we look back at the PAR map from the lower height, you see the whole left edge was below 700 but there's more light in the center of this map. When I raised the KS3000 up to 12 inches, 
Some photons from the middle spread out and fill in that side. Let's flip to the EPAR map. This is a perfect canopy of high density light. The lowest value here is 728 micromoles per square meter. But it's tough to say if this map is better than the EPAR map from the lower height. Here at 8.5 inches, the center values are a little higher and the distribution is nearly as good. Raising the KS3000 to 12 inches did not make a notable difference in the map, but we can expect that it will lead to slightly lower totals. Let's run the numbers on the raised EPAR test. The EPAR map and data from the official test of the 21.5 cm, 8.5 inch height are on the left. The hanging height for the raised test on the right was 30.5 cm, 12 inches. The maximum EPPFD went down from 1042 to 945 micromoles per square meter, and the average EPPFD ticked down to 860.1 micromoles per square meter. That's lower, but still incredible. The usable EPPF at the higher height is 696.7 micromoles. Remember, in the sphere test, Vipar spectra measured 782 micromoles of total flux. At the lower height, 731.1 of them reached the canopy. At the higher height, 696.7 of them reached the canopy. Raising the fixture cost us 34.4 micromoles of usable flux, which is about 5% of the total. With less usable flux and the same power draw, the photon efficiency dips to 2.34 micromoles per watt. These are incredible numbers. Usually, when I run high and low tests like this, the higher maps are clearly better. The improved distribution is worth the lower usable PPF. But in this case, I think the lower map has an advantage. The KS3000 does such a good job with distribution, even at a height of 8.5 inches, that there is no real benefit to running it higher. But at the same time, there's no big cost to doing so either. The higher 12-inch map is not any worse, it's just not any better. You can find all of my maps and data in the Vipar Spectra KS3000 test report in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Here are the main data for the Vipar Spectra KS3000 from the official EPAR test. It's certainly enough light for a 3x3 space. We rate it for over 11 square feet and we estimate the harvest potential from the KS3000 at 19.6 ounces. That's well over a pound. Here you can find our discount codes and shopping links. Our discount code, Dr. MJ Coco KS, is good on both Amazon and ViparSpectra.com. With it, your cost for the KS3000 will be about $359. That gives the Vipar Spectra KS3000 a cost efficiency of only 49 cents per micromole. It's an excellent price for a fixture with top-end components and performance. The KS3000 set a new record for photon efficiency in my testing, 2.45 micromoles per watt. It gets an A plus for distribution and has an average EPPFD above 900 micromoles per square meter. That might be the most impressive stat, so the winning number in the PAR test premiere giveaway is the average EPPFD. We'll call it 903. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the premiere, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Below the test data and the growth space calculator, you'll find my written review. Vipar Spectra has done a great job with the new KS series. They set out to create a high efficiency light with uniform distribution. They used top end components and designed a great light. The larger frames and algorithmically distributed diodes eliminate the hotspot and create great wall-to-wall -wall coverage. The top-end components lead to great efficiency and also help the KS series fixtures run pretty cool. The ambient temperature during the tests was 24 degrees Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit. I measured the maximum temperature on the LED bars at only 40.2 degrees Celsius, 104.4 Fahrenheit. The driver was detached and hit a high temperature of only 39.8 degrees Celsius, 103.6 Fahrenheit. I tested the dimmer at the higher 12 inch hanging height. As you can see, the PAR and EPAR percentages are closely aligned with the dimmer setting. At this height, 50% power will be ideal for seedlings, 75% power for early veg, and 100% power for late veg through flower. During flower, after the plants stop growing, you can drop the height to 8.5 inches and get the most usable light. The KS series are the first LED bar fixtures from Vipar Spectra. They are also among the best LED bar fixtures on the market. 
I was impressed with the KS5000 in a 4x4 area, and I'm even more impressed with this KS3000 in a 3x3 area. Viper Spectra is entering this market as the best in class. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the grower's interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Elaine at Vipar Spectra for sending me the KS3000 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next PAR test premiere giveaway. Learn about all our grow light giveaways on the deals and discounts page at CocoForCannabis.com. While you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join our next grow challenge, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.